We encourage you to sing out aloud, engage with us, and enter in as we gather in corporate worship and listen to God's Word. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Family Church Mother's Day service. Today is a special day for all our moms, so sit back and relax. We hope you will be blessed. Let us now stand as we open in prayer. Dear God, we come to you today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We praise you, honour you and appreciate you today, especially because it's also Mother's Day. We thank you for every viewer today that has joined us on this online service. We ask you to bless our service, receive our worship, bless our mums and let us learn from your precious word today. May we each grow in your grace. We ask this today in your beautiful name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We will not be moved Jesus you are here God is fighting for us God is on our side he has overcome, yes, He has overcome We will not be shaken, we will not be moved Jesus, You are here Carrying our burdens, covering our shame He has overcome, yes, He has overcome We will not be shaken, we will not be moved Jesus, You are here has overcome we will not be shaken we will not be moved Jesus you are here
Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up; it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing. Your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O、oh、my soul, O、oh、my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Your rich in love and You're slow to anger. Your name is great. And your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O、oh、my soul, O、oh、my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the angels near. 
and my time has come. Still, my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. My soul worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Lord, I'll worship Your holy name. Lord, I'll worship Your holy name. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to the Family Church. And as we are having today our online service once again, but today it's going to be a little different because we are celebrating Mother's Day. How exciting it is. And I do know that it is a little different, like we've come through Easter and all of us were at home. And it's the first time we've experienced this being at home during a very special time in our calendar. And now on Mother's Day, we're finding ourselves at home as well. But nevertheless, I know that because the Lord is with us, this day is going to be special. And so we welcome all our viewers, everyone that has joined us. I want to invite you right now and ask you, send out some invites. Send out some invites to friends that you know that would uh, benefit from coming online this morning and, and create some watch parties on the Facebook Live uh, medium and bring in people, those that you know need to hear the Word of God this morning. We've got a few things that are prepared this morning uh, as a special Mother's Day service. We're trying our best to... Uh, uh, bless you today, but let's see what's in store as the uh, service unfolds. This morning, I want to go into the time of tithes and offerings. It's the first time we're doing it here as the Family Church Online. I haven't done it before. I did not know how the uh, uh, long we're going to be in lockdown, but many people have asked, Pastor, how do we handle our sowing of tithes and offerings? And so, um, on the screen, dear friends, you will have our bank details. You are free to use those bank details and do the EFT and uh, by that medium, and that will take care of that. But let's read a portion of scripture to you today from the book of Matthew, chapter 6. The Bible says, Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. And if you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it, with the, uh, announce it with the trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give, when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your giving may be in secret. And then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Dear friends, let us bow our heads right now in prayer. Our gracious God and heavenly father, I thank you today that everyone out there that is watching and joined us with this broadcast, I thank you, Lord, for every seed that is being sown into your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that even as we sow the seed into your kingdom, in spite of it being locked down, your seed is going to perform and do exactly what it is meant to do according to your word. Because we know that it is your word that you said, and whatever we ask in your name, so shall it be. 
I pray today, O Lord, that everyone that is sowing today, I pray that you will bless them and that you will grant them, O God, the blessings in their homes. That, Lord, even those that might be in need right now, I pray that you'll give them an open heaven. I pray for a supernatural blessing upon every home, that none of the homes will ever be in need. None of the homes will ever be without any food. I pray none of the homes will ever be in a place of lack. And today we return the worship, the honor and the thanks to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Dear friends, I want to just say this before I continue with the uh, program. If you out there have a need for food and groceries, or if you know a family that's struggling, that needs some help, please give us a call. Let us know as a church and we will try our level best to get some food out to the people. And so this morning, I want to just move you a little right now to the program. And uh, we have a little surprise for you. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day. 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 Happy Mother's Day.
Well, all you mums out there, I certainly hope that you were excited to see your little bambinos, all your sons and daughters on screen, uh, having to wish you a happy Mother's Day. And then coupled with that, to see all the beautiful mums in the church on screen, I hope that you managed to spot your picture and also uh, to, I hope that you managed to see all your friends that you haven't seen for a long time. Well, this morning we have a little surprise. I um, have a Portia who's going to come and give us a greeting, seeing that it's Mother's Day. So I'm going to call her now to come and say a few words. Thank you, love. Good morning all on this beautiful day. How are you today? I am well on this Mother's Day and I really hope that you are too. I'm actually, I actually decided to dress up a bit more today and um, I even did my hair as you can see and I just thought that us girls are really missing getting dressed up so this is a perfect occasion for me to dress up and I also remember that I'm going to be standing next to my handsome hubby here so I thought I'd best dress up. Um, well on this morning I just want to wish all our incredible mums at the family church as well as to every other mum out there a very happy blessed and special Mother's Day mm. on this day. I know it's really, really different for all of us um, this year, especially for us as a church family. We've been waiting for this day and we were waiting to celebrate it. And uh, especially because of our teams had already started planning for this day. And uh, we've missed our first Easter. We've missed our first Mother's Day. We've missed our second daughter's event, which was this past Friday, as many of you would remember. But, um, and our, us girls, we're a bit disappointed about that. But I want to I wanna tell you, watch the space. Mm. There's something exciting in the pipeline for you girls. So on this day, there's so many of us who are going to miss that actual touch and that kiss and those hugs that go around on this day. And we give and we receive that on this day. There's so many of us who, who actually have lost our mums this past mm. year. And it's a painful day for us this year. There's mums and there's grandmas who are alone this year because of lockdown. And so they can't have their, their kids and their children um, visiting them for the first Mother's Day. And then we have our new mums as well. I mean, they've been waiting to celebrate their precious gift at church today. And this can't happen. And then we have those who are in a season of waiting mm. to be a mom and, and a wife. And, you know, God's got you. And there's yeah. also those who are hurting today who are feeling motherless in one way or another. Mm. I just want you to know that our God sees you, He knows you, mm. and He cares for you. Amen. And you matter to Him. Yeah. And my prayer is that you will hear the sweet sweet whispers of he heaven this day and that it will remind you that you are loved by him and that you are important to your family even if they can't see you today and now before I go I just want to read to you your love letter that you received from your heavenly father when we gifted you the spring at our first at our daughter's launch in February and I'm just going to read that to you right now my beloved daughter, I love you more than you know. You are beautiful and precious to me. You are so valuable. I chose you when I planned creation. I am with you always, every moment of every day. Remember, I am with you in every storm, in every heartache. You have never been alone, for I have been with you all of your life. My hand will always be there to guide you. Mm. I will not abandon you. I will be faithful to you until the end. Love your dad, almighty God. Amen. Isn't it so pertinent, those words in the times that we are facing and the season that we are in? I truly believe that the Lord dropped this into my spirit mm. for such a time as this. And my prayer to you is that you will actually return to this frame mm. as often as you need to. 
So today I am sending you so much love and lots of virtual hugs. I really would have loved to have greeted you personally at church. But just remember this, I miss you and I am literally looking forward to our first day back every day. And a message to you dads, no cooking and no washing dishes today and to the kids too. No cooking, no washing dishes for mom today, please. And love, you can tell them as well. I will do that, especially for you, babes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Portia. And uh, dear friends, I want to this morning, you know, uh, throughout uh, the churches, uh, had the, we not been in lockdown, we would have been uh, in church this morning and we would have been having very special programs for all the mums. We've tried our level best to put a, a program for you, but I will tell you a little bit in, a, in just a second or two. But one of the things we want to do today as a couple, this is our first Mother's Day at the family church. And so we would like all the mums in all the homes right now, everyone that is viewing, please can you stand? All the mums, can you please stand? Wherever you are, at home, some of you are watching at work, and those of you that are at your homes, please, mums, uh, dads, and kids, you stay seated. All the mums, please stand. Okay, are you standing? Great. Right. I want to just, uh, at this time with uh, Portia and I, just say a word of prayer over your life on this Mother's Day, the 10th of May, 2020. So please, could you bow your heads in prayer with us this morning as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the precious and in the mighty and in the wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, today as Portia and I stand here at our home and we do this online service, we pray today for every mum that is viewing we also include, include every mum that will be viewing later on today or later on in the week or whenever. And whenever they watch this broadcast, we pray this blessing over their life today. That Lord, that you will keep them in the palm of your hand. That Lord, you have made them special. You have made every mum out there special. And you have you've brought them to a place of God where you have given them wisdom, much courage much inner strength to be able to do the many things that they do. Mums are superheroes, Lord. And today we celebrate with them. They are our superheroes because they are so multitasked and multi-skilled. And we know that all of that only comes from you, our Heavenly Father. Thank you for that inner strength you've given them. Thank you for the strength that they possess on the inside because we know that as they depend on you, you will grant them the desires of their heart. Today, as the pastors of the family church, every mother that belongs to the family church, everyone that is viewing for the first time, even those that do not go to church that are viewing this broadcast, we bring every mother before you. I cover them today under the blood of Jesus Christ. I build a wall of fire all around our dear mums. I pray that you will bless them with good health, that you will give them sound minds, that you will grant them the desires of their heart. Every prayer that they prayed, I pray that you will answer those prayers. Every prayer they prayed over their children, over their marriages, over their health, over every area of their life, I pray that you will grant them the desires of their heart as those prayers will be answered. Today, on this Mother's Day, we celebrate with them and we look up from whence cometh our help and we say thank you for our mums. Thank you for our mums. And Father, this morning I also remember those that have lost their mums, perhaps in this year or in the last few years or whenever their mums have passed away. We remember them today. We remember all those mums that have gone on to glory, all the memories that they have left behind all the love and all the sacrifices that they've made. We want to say thank you for those mums. Today, many of us are where we are because of praying mothers. 
Many of us are where we stand today because of mothers that pray and seek the Lord. And so, Father, today, I know that I'm also a testimony. Portia and myself stand here as a testimony today because of praying mothers. We bless every mom today. And we say, may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. For you indeed are a Proverbs 31 woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. We say today as a church, we found them in you. Bless our mums now. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, I felt something there, love, over that prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to say right now, we've got a little surprise for you. It's Mother's Day, and so you've seen the kids. You've seen uh, the uh, Mother's Day greetings that they've given. You've seen your pictures come up. You know, there's only so much we can do online, and we try. This is all brand new to us with having to try and attempt all of this, but I, you know, with the help of our eldest son, Alaric, and then the rest of the kids, they've really been a blessing and we're able to pull all of this together. And then some of the uh, servants at the church that really have been a help to us as well. And so this morning, I want to give you, or not I, Portia and I have got a little surprise for you. <coughs> there is a gentleman that is well known in our country and uh, he is also well known in other parts of the country. And he wrote a song many years ago. He wrote a song for his mother. And I want you today just to sit back, listen to the words of the song. We're going to connect with him now online. We're going to bring him online. And his name is Trevor Sampson. Most of you know him. For those of you that do not know him, he's well known in the church world. And he's a psalmist uh, um, uh, through his calling. And he's going to bless us with a song today, especially for the family church. So this morning, sit back as we invite Trevor Sampson all the way from Johannesburg. And we're going to bring him in now to bless you with the song. Remember, listen to the words. God bless you. Well, greetings, everyone. Um, this is Trevor Sampson here. And I just want to say a very, very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers at the Family Church in Durban. And uh, this song is actually a very popular song that uh, I wrote a number of years ago for my mother, and it goes like this. She was nearly 17 Faced with much uncertainty A man she loved with all her life Betrayed her trust with all of his lies She was young, much too young to be a mother And yet she chose to have her moments of pleasure The future of her unborn child Now in her hands, faced with much anxiety She took a stand, refusing the offer to abort her child the shame she fought to save this little life She was young, much too young to be a mother And yet, her mistake has turned into a treasure Thank you, Mother, for giving me a chance to live Better gift than life, no one can give. Thank you, mother, for all those sacrifices you've made. Thank you, mother, thank you. 
is all I can say. Thank you, Mama. God, who formed my inward parts, knit me together near my mommy's heart. Fearfully and wonderfully made, that's me and that's you. He took the time to plan all my day. And for the awesome wonder of my birth, I will confess and praise God's name in all the earth. Thank you, Mother, for giving me a chance to live. Make you feel proud And so she is very proud And praise to God Would always be the worst from my mouth Thank you mother For giving me a chance to live And I want to thank No one can give I wanna thank you, Mama For giving me a chance to live And I really thank you, Mama The gift of life only God can give But most of all, I say thank you to my Lord, my Savior, my God, for giving me a chance. While I was in mommy's womb, my God protected me, fashioned days for me. Yes, created me a path in which I'm walking today. So I'm really, really thankful. Yeah, yeah, yes, I thank you, Father, for giving me a chance to live. Oh, I really thank you, God. I want to thank you, Jesus, for giving me a chance to live. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, may you indeed have a very, very happy Mother's Day this day and every other day. Bye-bye. Amen. Amen. Well, were you blessed with that song? Did you enjoy that song tried by Trevor Sampson? That was a very special dedication to all you beautiful mums out there. A very special song. Trevor wrote that song, like he said, um, for his mum and the experience that he went through as an individual. What a blessing. When he sings that song, the, I, I've been in a service once when he sang that song and the altar call was huge with people that came forward because there was so much of hurt just within mums. And so we want to say to you, Trevor Sampson, thank you for blessing us today. Thank you for that beautiful song as the Holy Spirit inspired the writing of that song. Today, many years later, that song still speaks and mends the broken hearts, binds up the brokenhearted, makes them strong again as the power of the Holy Spirit is working. So Trevor, Thank you for that song. Dear friends, we are going to go into the word right now. And I want you just to bow your heads with me in prayer. Father, I come before you today in the name of Jesus. And I want to say thank you. Thank you, O Lord, for this privilege that we have to once again now come and just listen to your word. Father, even as I will minister your word, I know that you've spoken to me. And every time I minister, you also speak to me. 
I pray, Holy Spirit, today you will speak into the lives of all our dear people that are watching today. Everyone that is watching this broadcast, I pray, Holy Spirit, come and just be with them. Bless them, encourage them, and build them through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to start this morning with the thought for the week, and you'll see it coming up on the screen. Becoming obsessed with what people think is the quickest way to forget about what God thinks. Now, isn't that true? Becoming obsessed with what people think is the quickest way to forget what God thinks. And so I leave that with you today. Don't worry about what people think. Don't worry about the opinion of man. And when I say man, I mean woman as well. If we are going to live our lives and our, if we are going to model our lives around what people say, I can tell you, dear friends, we are not going to go far because we're going to be trying to please people. We are not people pleasers. We are God pleasers. And the more we become God pleasing, our relationships around us tend to become stronger, more mature, and that much better. Because we know there's no need now for putting expectations that are, there's a word, unrealistic on people and where it just puts added pressure and really we don't need that pressure. So becoming obsessed with what people think is the quickest way to forget about what God thinks. Worry about what God thinks. And don't worry about what man thinks. That's your blessing today. This morning, we're going to go into the teaching. And I'm going to speak to you for the next uh, 20 minutes plus minus on a subject called, This is My Story. Life's dis Disappointments. Everyone has a story. There's a song that goes, This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. And I want to minister to you today on the subject on life's disappointments. And I know as a young man growing up and now to where I am in life, I've been through many disappointments in life. I've been with people that have been through many disappointments in life. Nobody on this earth will ever go through life and not have disappointments. Disappointments is part of this journey that we go through because it is a time where God starts to test us and God starts to see how and where the level of our faith is. I want you this morning to turn your attention to the screen and you can turn with me to your Bibles. It's a very peculiar verse that I'm going to read from and minister from this morning. And remember, I'm talking about disappointments in life. Let's turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 24 to 30. Matthew, chapter 13, verse 24 to 30. You're going to have it coming up on the screen and we can read this together. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in the field? Where did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered. Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat from them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and, and then and put them in bundles to be burnt. Then gather the wheat and bring them into the barn. That story that Jesus spoke, and he, he spoke many parables. That's one of the parables that he spoke. And I'm spending a lot of time reading the parables uh, over this time of lockdown periods. I'm gleaning and I'm getting a lot of information. And the Holy Spirit is just dropping few things into my spirit as I'm 
trying to understand and learn more and more about the Lord Jesus Christ. What does he want for us? What does he want us to do? And he and I'm just trying to come to the place where and I don't think I'll ever come to that place because this relationship with God is a progressive relationship. One thing I can tell you that the more we speak to God, the more we talk to him, the more we worship him, the more we pray, the greater our relationship becomes, the greater the measure of peace we receive in our lives. And I want to encourage you during this time of lockdown, read the word. And like I was reading the word, and this is what came to me as I read from the book of Matthew chapter um, uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse number 24 to 30. And so Jesus speaking about the parable of the wheat and where the wheat and they sowed the uh, seed and then they went to sleep. And so when they got up, they saw that the weeds were also growing with the wheat. Simultaneously, both grew together. And I'm talking to you today about disappointments in life. So you may ask, no, what does that verse have to do with me being disappointed? Well, that's what happens in life. We start off having to sow seed to expect a certain harvest. We do many things. We go to study, we go to school, we go to university, we study theology or whatever it may be and whatever vocation you are in. And we do many things in order to get to a place where we want to see a certain harvest. But like in the story with what Jesus told his disciples, as the wheat was growing, so too did the weeds. And that's what happens in life. And then one day you get up and you expect to see a harvest, but then without, if, without uh, and, and not seeing a harvest, what do we see? We see wheat, gr uh, weeds growing in between the harvest that God has intended. And disappointment comes in. And that is the angle I want to talk to you about today. Because there are many examples of life's disappointments, of things that have just let us down. Where we as children of God had a certain expectation. We expected certain things, but it turned out a whole lot different. And then we find ourselves in a place of where we are disappointed and our disappointment then leads to other things. Let's see as we go along with this morning's teaching. Examples of life's disappointments. The first one is relationships never work out. How many of you out there can attest to this? where relationships that we were in, relationships, be it on the job, be it uh, relationships in church, relationships with friends, or general relationships never worked out the way we wanted it to. Perhaps people did things or said things and somehow disappointment crept in because the relationship did not work the way we wanted to. The second example is promotion did not come through. For those of you out there that are going through this and you know what I'm talking about, where you expected a certain promotion and that did not come through and disappointment came in. Disappointment came and distracted you and took you away and placed you in a place where you are starting to just mope, you are starting to groan, you are starting to murmur. So much so that the disappointment has taken you off the track that God had you on. Another example of disappointments in life is children. Many children and parents, you out there, you know what we, oh, I'm talking about when I refer to children. There's so much of expectation in children. We grow up our children. We raise them in a certain way and certain things happen. And along life's journey, they decide to do other things and disappointment comes in. And then there's friends, friends, all of us as friends. And how often do friends disappoint us? How often do friends do things or say things that disappoint us? And then, of course, there's neighbors. Everybody has neighbors. And there's a certain expectation and then maybe you expected something from your neighbor and it did not happen the way you wanted it to. There's also another example is marriages that have gone wrong. Perhaps you are out there and you are also listening to the sermon today and you are wondering, I'm in the same boat where my marriage did not go the way I expected it to go. And you are sitting today disappointed, wondering and having a whole lot of regret. What if, what if, what if? Then there's another example of death. That's something I've experienced many times. 
where people are disappointed. And some people, an example, some people are disappointed with the people that have passed on, perhaps a spouse, a husband or a wife, and they promised to do many things, to build a house or to go overseas, and it never happened. And now you're sitting in disappointment with one disappointment, the fact that they passed on, the other disappointment that your dream did not get realized. And many people are also in a place where they are sitting and they're disappointed that God in their book, God has taken away their loved one prematurely. Perhaps also some of you have also experienced in, uh, in your job or in the company and in church even. Leaders around you that have disappointed you. Leaders that have said things or done things that has brought disappointment to you. And lastly, church. Church is also, we have experienced many disappointments. I've experienced it. You've experienced it. Many people experience disappointment. And I guess the more I learn and I see this, I realize that this is all part of a journey that God takes us on. But disappointment, if not managed well, it leads to doubt. It leads to anger. It leads to bitterness. And therefore, we as children of God, we've got to understand that when we get to a place of just being bitter, I mean, sorry, being disappointed, we need to manage that disappointment. Otherwise, that disappointment is going to manage you. And therefore, right now, as I will minister, I pray that you will understand and catch the spirit of this. Because if you are in a place of disappointment, and if you are disappointed about something that is keep on coming back and recurring and recurring and recurring in life, then you need to be decisive like how I was decisive on many times. And I've made a choice decision to do certain things. And that has contributed for me not to get into a place where I went into doubt or anger, or bitterness for that matter. But God helped me as I sought to look up, and he took me into the place that he had destined. If not managed well, disappointment can go to discouragement. If not managed well, discouragement can then lead to disillusionment, where you are confused and you get further into a disarray. And if, not, if disillusionment is not even married, you go further into what we call depression. And when you get to a place of depression, following depression comes defeat. Because the enemy wants to defeat you and he sows the seed of disappointment. And I say to you today, be aware. Be aware and understand what is happening around you. Don't give in to the enemy. When you're in a place of disappointment, deal with it. Be, be precise in how you deal with it and snap out of disappointment and come back on track to where God wants you. Lessons from our story. Who knows the story about Job? We all know the story about Job. Job lived a life and where he was one of the most blessed men that we hear about in the Bible and all that he had gone through. Job, they say, started with seven sons and he had three daughters. He had 7,000 sheep, he had 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, 500 donkeys, and he had a large number of servants. The Bible says that he was the greatest man in the East. What a testimony to have. Now imagine Job, and Job went through his challenge. When Job ended up, Job had lost everything. Everything that I've just read to you now, all those uh, uh, belongings and those um, what Job had owned, Everything Job had lost. Imagine how Job would have felt. Another lesson. Imagine Joseph having to come and his brothers dealt with him the blow that they dealt. And put him into the pit and sold him off. Imagine the disappointment on his life. Imagine you out there right now that are thinking, hey, no. You know you're talking about disappointment and you are knocking on my door. Well, dear friends, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. Because if you today are disappointed in life, I want to give you lessons. Lessons that you can learn because they are lessons that have helped me. And I know that through the power of the Holy Spirit, our Heavenly Father is going to help us and take us out of disappointment because He has greater things in store for us. And so the first one is the lessons from our story is understanding the times. When you are going through a time of disappointment, understand the time that you're going through. Discern those times that you're going through and be, um, you have to be so accurate. 
without wasting time. Because the moment that spirit raises its ugly head, you've got to deal with it right then and there and get it out the way. And so don't, the second one is don't be dependent on people. I think all of us learn this lesson somewhere along the line. Some of us learn it many times. Some of us take many years to learn it. But whatever the case is, don't be dependent on people where our trust is on man and not on God. Because disappointment will come. Another lesson is God will teach you what you cannot see. God will teach you as an individual what you cannot see when you, when you deal with people. And all of us deal with people every single day. And everybody is bound to be disappointed. I can tell you there are people that are disappointed in me. They are, I'm disappointed in certain people. But guess what? It does not matter when we come to the place to know that there is a bigger picture that God has for our lives. And so another lesson is it's either the enemy's setback or it's God's comeback. And you need to discern that. It's either the enemy setback where you're in a place of disappointment for whatever it is that you are disappointed in. Whatever it is that you are sitting and you are moping and you are groping and you're not coming out of it. You need to ask yourself the question, Father, what is it? Because if you really answer the question, and I'm going to give you a point in just a minute or two. You either believe God or not. That's the bottom line. And dear friends, I speak this to you today with much love. We either believe God or we don't. You know, we are at a time in our life right now where many people are talking about the second coming of Christ. Many people are talking about it's the end times. Did you hear that? And if it is the end times, are you ready? Or are you sitting in a place and disappointment is robbing you of having Jehovah Shalom in your life and having a sound mind knowing that God has greater days ahead of you? We tend to go deep when we should uh, actually be more disciplined. Sometimes when we in a place of disappointment, we go, we speak to people. We want to understand what is it and why did I get into that place and what's causing me to be disappointed? And you want to find out perhaps it was a business deal that didn't go right. Perhaps it was a promotion that didn't come your way. And then you try to go deep and look into the scriptures and speak to people. What is it that I did wrong that I'm in a place of disappointment? But sometimes it's not about going deep. It's just about having pure discipline. And discipline, what am I talking about? Just having discipline. If you um, know that sometimes perhaps your promotion was lost because you, you were not disciplined in coming to work on time or handing in reports timelessly or, or uh, executing the functions that you were employed to do, uh, you, you did not execute it to the level that you should have. Perhaps it's discipline that we need more than going deep in the word. And sometimes God speaks that way and holds back that which, because we must understand that as children of God, a promotion will come when God knows we are ready for that promotion. And if it does not come, then we need to go back to God and ask him, which areas of our life do we need to prepare and get ready? Because when promotion comes, glory has to go to him. And God will not bring a promotion unless he knows we are ready for that promotion. The next lesson is either believe God, as I said earlier on, or not. And then quick fixes. Oh, goodness. I've been there. I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt, and I got rid of the T-shirt. Quick fixes increases the damage. I've seen that. I've experienced it. I've done that. And it increases the damage. So just let it be. Get over it. If you're disappointed about something, get over it and be quick to get over it. And then lastly, move on. If you're disappointed about something and you know that it's a stumbling block and it's something that's holding you back from going, moving forward, just let it be and move on. You know the song that was written, I don't know who's the, the singer, but it was written many years ago. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Jesus is the answer. Let it be. I know that's not the words, but I'm putting my own words. But let it be. Don't let anything hold you back. 
I'm putting a little uh, um, saying on the screen. Read this. Don't blame people for disappointing you. Blame yourself for expecting too much of them. I can see some of you are laughing because the penny has dropped. Here's another one for you. They burned the bridge and asked why I don't come and visit. <laughs> you like that? They burned the bridge and then asked why I don't come and visit. Dear friends, in order to deal and to go through the disappointments in life, you've got to know who you are in God. You've got to know that God loves you. You've got to know like in the book of Jeremiah, the Bible says, for I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So even though you are disappointed because of something that happened around you, understand that there is a bigger picture. Understand that God knows what he's doing. Isaiah also says, for the thoughts, for my thoughts, God says, are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Dear friends, understand, God knows what he's doing. And if there's something that did not go your way, then don't give up. Just hang in there, but don't let that disappointment take you down to defeat where you get into a place of depression eventually and nip it in the bud and deal with that spirit. On this Mother's Day, I ministered this word because I know there's many mums out there that are sitting and they are disappointed in many things. Some of you are disappointed in your marriage. Some of you are disappointed in your children. Some of you are disappointed in your husband. Some of you are disappointed because of the jobs you were in and certain decisions that were made. Some of you are disappointed with certain decisions you made as an individual and wherever you are in life. But I tell you today, dear friends, don't let disappointment take you down the wrong path because God has a plan. I leave you with a scripture to you today, a scripture that will give you some encouragement because always understand the story is not over. God is still writing our story and every day he's adding to that story. The greater the level of our submission to him, the easier the story becomes and it unfolds and you begin to get the peace coming in your life as fulfillment comes and you walk this path. And I leave you with Ecclesiastes 7, 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Your time will come. You just hang in there because it's not over yet. God has not closed the chapter yet in your life. And so don't let this disappointment that you're going through make you believe that it is over and God has forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. He will take you and he will place you in a place that he has destined for you. Trust him. Trust him. In conclusion, dear friends, I leave you with this today. Don't dig up in doubt what you planted in faith. Let it be and watch it grow. God is in control. And oftentimes we tend to do that. When we're disappointed in life, we tend to question our faith. Our faith takes a knock. Our faith gets weak. I leave you with this on this Mother's Day. Be strong. Be strong and know that God loves you. Dear friends, we've come to the end of this time. It's a very special day as we all know. It's Mother's Day. And so on this Mother's Day, for those of you right there, I would like you just to bow your heads wherever you are at your home or those at work. Just bow your heads with me in prayer. Our gracious God and heavenly Father, I want to say thank you today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in the lives of all our dear people. I say thank you today on behalf of everyone that is watching. Thank you for what you've done and where you brought us through in life. But Father, today, even as you place this word in my spirit on disappointment, I pray, O oh God, that people will understand that just like Job, who had so much to be disappointed about, but at the end of his life, 
you gave him so much. At the end of the life of Job, Job lived to 140 years old and he saw his fourth generation and you blessed him twice as much in his latter days than in his beginning. And so I pray today that everyone that is watching will understand and come to the place to know that as their faith gets stronger in you, as they deal with this disappointment in the way that they should, that you are going to fulfill your purpose and plan. And let us, oh God, not make it difficult. Help us not to make it difficult. Help us not to fight you and push against you. But Father, just lead us through the power of your Holy Spirit. And right now I pray, bless every home. And even as we celebrate with our homes, in our homes, with our moms and families, bless us today. Let us have a special time as we honor our mothers today. And I pray, God, those that do not have their moms with them, strengthen them, be with them, and help us to know that one day we will all see our loved ones. Today, I pray that your peace will rest in our homes as we thank you for your precious word. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear friends, I thank you today for just joining us. I pray that you were blessed with this uh, broadcast. I pray that everything that we've done today was a blessing to you. But don't go off the screen. We are going to just give you a little announcement. But I will see you on Tuesday at 7 p.m. We're going to have another time of listening to the word, but also a time of worship and intense prayer. So dear friends, God bless you. Stay online, listen to the closing announcement and I will see you on Tuesday. God bless you. You have just been part of our online service and we at the Family Church were blessed to have you worship with us. During this lockdown period, be sure to join us live on Facebook and YouTube on Sundays at 9 a.m. and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Give honor to the Lord with all your wealth and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your storehouses will be full of grain and your vessels overflowing with new wine. In order to make giving more convenient, our bank details are available on the screen for EFTs. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy and stay connected. God bless.